Hello everyone, I'm about to tell you how Klarna monitors its services running multiple clouds without suffering from doing it. But first, let's talk about monitoring. Well, fun is subjective. What is fun to me might not be fun to you, and there's a whole psychological discussion about it. But I believe that we can now agree that being woken up at 1 a.m. at night with a patient saying, hey, nobody's able to use your services, is not fun. Because of that, having good monitoring in the place is worthwhile. And that's why I'm always the skeptical one. Just to introduce myself, I'm Guilherme. I'm a senior site reliability engineer at Klarna. A fun fact about me is, although I'm Brazilian, I'm a terrible soccer player. Well, yeah, bad news. Being Brazilian and being good at soccer are completely unrelated things. To start with, we'll talk about Klarna and how customer obsessed we are. And I will give you a, just a quick introduction of how we structured our multi-cloud strategy. Then a quick recap on why you would monitor your application. And then I will explain to you how adopting the best practices from the beginning made all the difference. First, what is Klarna? To start off, let's talk numbers. With over 90 million global active users and 2 million uh, transactions a day, Klarna is meeting the changing demands of consumers who want to shop, pay, and bank on one intuitive platform. Customer obsession is one of our principles and we act accordingly. An example is my team's mission. We facilitate the software engineer's journey into providing the best experience for the customer. It's also important to mention that we stick to our principles from the beginning to the end. From signing up for Klarna to making our first purchase, to storing your data following our service terms and conditions. Our principles back every single process in Klarna. As you might already know, multi-cloud refers to the use of multiple cloud providers. Anyway, there are many reasons why we would go multi-cloud. And among them, you find lower latency for the customers, to avoid vendor locking, and to be exposed to cutting edge technology. I'll not cover this because it would last ages, but HashiCorp has done a survey on the state of cloud strategy. And they found that 76% of the companies are already multi-cloud. And 34 call digital transformations one of the main reasons that led us to go multi-cloud. You think you don't need it now, but it's going to come. Trust me. Now, let's come back to monitoring. I would love to have a quick recap on why you would monitor your application so we are on the same page. If you allow me to do a quick exercise, I want you to imagine that that black box over there is your service running and thousands of customers are using it. Well, let's simplify. Given an input, you get an output. As Shakespeare would say, therein lies the rub. Can you tell me how many requests it's serving per second? How many users? How many errors? No! Because it's a black box and you just know that something's coming in and something's coming out. That is why the main idea is to create a window on that black box to see what's happening inside. Generally, this is what we call monitoring. Now that you observe your service, you find yourself in the necessity of using more than one cloud provider. And now we will explain to you how Klarna has been successful in monitoring its services by implementing the best practices from the beginning. Cool. Now, focus on your application. Also consider that the application logic remains constant regardless of where it's running. What do you expect from this new approach? What are the characteristics that you, as a developer, are looking for? First, you're now running on AWS and Azure. You also realize that you want to experience context switching as little as possible. It means that you want to monitor your application the same way, regardless of where it's running. 
you want to have the same expressiveness in both clouds as well. As for simplicity, you also want to have the same method of fetching these metrics. So you don't need to recall how the integration works in different clouds. That said, Klarna chose to have an observability platform that is not tied to any cloud. Consequently, the developers will undergo the same experience and have all their application metrics in one place. Datadogs help us with that. I guess I don't even need to explain you how, right? Let's start with a latency example. Among all the possibilities, we decided to go for tags instead of creating different namespaces based upon infrastructure boundaries. It's because namespace limits our dashboarding capabilities. And come on, tags are the thing. Therefore, read this metric as the endpoint latency. Now, it's desirable to know this value per endpoint. Also, consider that we chose the tag approach. So, of course, we tag this metric with a label called endpoint. It's still within the services semantic, we will find an important tag called environment that determines which stage of the development life cycle this data is coming from. It allows us to differentiate between the data coming from the live environments and the data coming from the test environment without changing the meaning or the implementation of the metric. But wait, of course, it's just the beginning. We also found it crucial to divide this data into different regions, especially when we need to understand how the geolocation of our clients changes the big picture. Good news here, Datadog gives this and many other tags automatically. You just need to configure the cloud provider integration and voila, you got it. Okay, you know where this is going. I know you know that. What happens now that we need to manage multiple clouds? Exactly, just another tag. The implementation of the metric is still the same. How the metric is fetched is still the same. How the developer interacts with this is also the same. For the developer, querying the data for a specific cloud provider is a matter of choosing the value of a tag accordingly. There is no magic. There's no learning curve. It's just implementing the best practices from the beginning. Okay, nice talk, Guy. But what is the takeaway from it? Okay, if possible, it start with the best practices. There are usually shared learnings that will allow you to spend less time organizing and deciphering data and more time looking after your customer. By the way, have you tagged your metrics? <laughs>